Today on the Where Traveler podcast, our hostess Teresa Rodriguez talks with Where Traveler Chicago editor Selena Fragasi. Along with her contribution to Where Traveler, Selena is an independent music and festival publicist and arts and culture journalist. She's contributed to publications to include the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Sun Times, Modern Luxury, Nylon, and the New York Times. She writes about events, festivals, culinary arts, and fine living experiences. She does personality profiles on the most notable creators and the movements they are leading, and she knows Chicago like nobody else. Selena and Teresa talk about Chicago attractions and eateries, where to get the best entertainment bargains, amazing things to do for free or on a budget all around Chicago, and what it means to experience the new Roaring Twenties in the city that best embodies all the allure of the last Roaring Twenties. You're going to love Selena's take on how to make a full day of Chicago, starting with brunch, and yes, you'll get our quintessential Chicagoans take on pizza. Now, if you like this kind of content and you want to support the Where Traveler podcast, please go to iTunes or Spotify or iHeartRadio or whichever app you open to hear us and rate the show. And if you're feeling expressive, please write us a review and let other listeners know how you feel. Also, it helps if you share the show with your friends and your fellow travelers. It really helps us reach new listeners, and we sure do appreciate it. And now, along with our host, Teresa Rodriguez, here is our guest today, Where Traveler Chicago editor, Selena Fergasi. You're listening to the Where Traveler podcast, the audio companion for Where Traveler magazine in print and online. For more information, go to wheretraveler.com. And now, Teresa Rodriguez, editor in chief for Where Traveler San Francisco. Hi, this is Teresa Rodriguez, your host with the Where Traveler podcast. And today we have Selena Fergasi, who is our Where Traveler editor in the Chicago office. Hey, Selena, how's it going? Hi, Teresa. I'm good. How are you today? I am fantastic. What's going on over in Chicago? How's the weather over there in the Windy City? Yeah, Chicago is starting to enter its early winter phase, I would say. So it's a little gloomy, a little cold, but still very seasonable and very fall-like, thankfully. So let's get into this because I have to say that I've been to Chicago a few times and every time I go, I'm like, wow, the food scene. (laughs) You guys, I would have to say of all the cities in the United States, Chicago was one of the first to actually really nail the farm to table because the farms are so close to you guys. I mean, would you be in agreement with that? Yeah, I think you're right. We actually, I'd have to look this up, but there's a restaurant here called Uncommon Ground. And I believe they were one of the very, very first to introduce that concept. They're a great restaurant. They have a rooftop garden that they pull from a lot as well. Um, But they were kind of the pioneers in that movement and it started in Chicago. That's fantastic. So can you tell us about what some of the food, you know, what's going on in Chicago right now? Where should we go for, for some really great meals? You know, the great thing about Chicago is we have so many neighborhoods and they're so identified by their cultural background. So Chicago is a great place to get food of literally every ethnic variety and cultural background. Um, You know, in 2017, Bon Appetit actually named Chicago the best culinary city in the nation. And it's something that I think we really still have rest our laurels on. And we have um, the James Beard Awards are held here. We have the... National Restaurant Association Convention is held here. So there's a lot going on in terms of just the dining picture in general, the bigger picture. But in terms of like where to go to eat, there's so many great places opening up. It gets a little overwhelming in Chicago because we have new places all the time. Some great ones, though, that I've opened recently. There's a place in Logan Square called Giant Great place to go for rustic American dishes. Um, Logan Square in general has become really kind of a dining capital. We have Longman and Eagle there, which is award winning. And then we have Parachute not too far away, which is a fusion of Korean American food styles. Um, The great thing about Chicago is we have so many top chef people here as well that have opened restaurants. And so if you love that show, if you love the 
sort of celebrity side of culinary. It's a great place to come for that. The West Loop has probably the biggest per capita uh, of restaurants in the country with top chef people behind them. So, of course, Stephanie Izzard has The Girl and the Goat, which is a perennial favorite. So there's a lot of good places in the West Loop to try. Um, a new place that opened also in Logan Square is called Good Fortune. They have a really sleek kind of speakeasy vibe and then great American, new American dishes. So the speakeasy scene is really exploding still in Chicago. I know it's funny because I just was talking with someone about we're entering the new 20s, roaring 20s. And again, we have the speakeasy culture kind of coming up, but they're really kind of combining a speakeasy bar scene with food. So that's becoming a big trend in Chicago right now. Wow. Let's talk about that because you know what? I didn't even actually think about that. It is going to be the twenties again. I know. In a few weeks. Holy I know. Moses. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Crazy. You know, and it's uh, next year marks the hundredth anniversary of prohibition. So it, there's a lot going on with that scene right now in Chicago, of course, is a hotbed for that. You know, we have our, people don't always talk about it, but our gangster past that kind of had a lot to do with that scene, but that trend of a speakeasy style bar, cocktail lounge, restaurant is really, really hot in Chicago right now. So um, when we, you know, when we're talking with, about speakeasies, what I envision is like a door and then there's a <laughs> passcode involved. Is there places like that or is it more like off the beaten track or they're hard to find? Um, can you tell us about that? Yeah. Yeah, there still is that kind of aesthetic to it. So one of the really popular ones in Chicago that is world-renowned at this point is the Violet Hour. They've won so many awards. They've had some of the best bartenders who have won awards there, and they have a really creative cocktail program that's based in Wicker Park, and they do have that hidden door aesthetic. So there's a huge hey. mural on the wall where the door is at, and you really have to be looking close to find out. But you know, now, because it's so popular, there's always a line of people, so you, know, you can't really actually miss it. But um, there are speakeasies in basements now. There are... Um, yeah, just around the hidden corner. So there's a lot of those types of places where you have to kind of know what you're doing. We also have a brand new place in Chicago. It opened about a year ago called Safe House, and it's very spy themed. You have to have know the passcode to get into that place. Okay, so tell us about that, because that seems like a place I'd want to yeah. go with you. Yeah, it actually it started in Milwaukee, and then they've had so much success there that the founders brought it to Chicago. And it's very 60s, James Bond, spy-themed. It's a restaurant, but they have a ton of great decor. They show spy movies. They have themed drinks and food. But the other cool part is right next to them, they have Escape House, which is their sister um, escape room attraction. Mm -hmm. So you can go there, do the escape room. It's also spy themed. They have a replica of the White House for one of them. It's really cool. I've done it before myself. And then you can go grab food afterwards, but you do have to know the passcode. And so are you going to share it with us? Or do, they have, <laughs> do our readers have to go to Where Traveler Chicago to find out? You know, they change it routinely. So I don't even know what it is at this point, but I'll have to sort of do my investigating and find out for an it. insider tip. Yeah, yeah your, your spy work. You got to get your spy work done. <laughs> and do exactly. they have like a, a cool spy cocktail? They they do have themed cocktails. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but they do great events around different holidays too. So like for Halloween, they had a costume contest, of course, all spy themed. So it's a great place if you love that spy movies or that kind of culture, you'll be totally immersed in it there from everything from the decor to the cocktail menu to the activities they have. That is so fantastic. I love the fact that yeah. there's a, a spy speakeasy in Chicago. That's great. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we're talking about, you know, more of like, say, for example, places to eat during the day, not necessarily the speakeasies. Do you have some of your favorites? I'd love to know where you like where you like to, to, to hang out for a good meal. In <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. for goodness sakes, because if you think about it, you've got the best job in Chicago, right? I mean, your job is to cover I food mean. and wine and events and attractions and you get to write about yeah. it. And, you know, it's pretty awesome, right? I, I can't complain. It is one of the best jobs to be in this city with so many great, I mean, not even just dining, but we have so many great attractions here. But the brunch scene is really, really popular Ooh. in Chicago. And I've noticed that more restaurants are now opening it up. So it's not just the weekends anymore, but they actually do brunch during the weekdays. So it's a great chance if people want to get together, even for like a business meeting over brunch, or they have a day off and want to get brunch. There's a lot of opportunities for that here. One of my favorite places to go is Gemini Club in Lincoln Park. They have one of the best uh, eggs Benedict I've had in the city. 
Mm. And it's right near Lincoln Park Zoo, too. So if you are making a day of it, go there for brunch, walk down to Lincoln Park Zoo, hang out there. It's free. So it's a nice day to have planned. Oh, I like that. Let's talk about mm-hmm. some of the attractions in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm all about food and wine, but I know that our listeners like to do other things <laughs> besides eat and drink. Tell us about some of the attractions, some of your favorite things to do in the beautiful city of Chicago. There are so many things. I mean, our museums are absolutely top notch in Chicago. We actually have a museum campus, which is in the South Loop area. It's really close to Soldier Field. And it's an interconnected pathway that connects the Shedd Aquarium, the Field Museum, and the Adler Planetarium. So if you want to make a day of it, you can go to all three attractions. There is a thing called the City Pass. You can get into all three or more for a reduced rate. But our museums just have the best artifacts, natural history. You can learn a ton about whether it's Native Americans or Egyptians. And they always have people working in the field and getting the latest relics. We have one of the largest intact um, uh, skeletons of a T-Rex anywhere Ooh. within the United States. Her name is Sue. She's amazing. So there's that to go see at the Field Museum. The Adler Planetarium is also very interesting. They have a lot of really high def telescopes that people can go there and actually look at the cosmos. On a, and they have a lot of events after dark, which is great too. So if you want to really go and see celestial bodies, it's a great time to go there. Most of our museums actually do after dark events, which are great for adults only if you want mm-hmm. to go and get a look at an exhibit. But, you know, have, be around your friends, grab some drinks. The Art Institute of Chicago does that as well, uh, Mm -hmm. which is the Art Institute has one of the most impressive collections of French Impressionistic paintings in the world, actually. And it dates back to the early 19th century when we had a private collector who donated her collection to the museum. So that's kind of cool. If you're into that period of artwork, you can go there and see that on display. But beyond museums, we also have um, great zoos, like I mentioned, Lincoln Park Zoo and Brookfield Zoo. We have the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum. They have some really cool things there, including a butterfly room where you can go and just be immersed in all these butterflies flying around your head. But it's a great spot for kids as well. So there's a lot of family-friendly activities you can do there or at the Children's Museum at Navy Pier, another great place where you can do a lot with your family on a budget as well. Well, that's fantastic. Let's talk about a budget for, for, mm-hmm. for a minute. Um, we interviewed a the New York Times budget writer, and she had some really great tips about how to save money in New York. I didn't realize that you could just go buy tickets to the theater right up at the theater and save money that way the day of the show. Mm-hmm. Are there other, yeah. you know, are there secrets for specifically for Chicago that you would recommend for our listeners? Yeah. So theater is another big deal in Chicago. We have Broadway in Chicago here now, which we get a lot of really great first run shows or straight from Broadway shows. And for them, there's a place called Hot Ticks. You can go there and get half price tickets. But like your New York contact was saying, if you go to the theater the day of the show, they usually will have very discounted tickets. I know a lot of people who saw Hamilton that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a great resource to have here. Of course, Hamilton is is wrapping up, but that was here for a really long time. So we get great theater productions in Chicago. Um, But other budget things, you know, there is a lot of free things to do here, like the Lincoln Park Zoo. In the summer, we have an incredible array of beaches to go to in Chicago. Of course, being up right on Lake Michigan, there's a lot of beachfront areas to go and just spend the day on the water. Um, And we also have a lot of walking trails along the beach. We have the 606 Trail, which runs through Logan Square and Wicker Park, where you can go and enjoy the scenery as you walk or bicycle through there. So there's a lot to do in the more seasonable months, which are budget friendly. Yeah, let's talk about the seasons because, you know, here in San Francisco, we don't have seasons. We just have (laughs) Carl the Fog who comes to visit us and then he leaves. (laughs) That's about it. So let's talk about what to do each season. So winter, what would you say the best things to do in winter in Chicago are? Yeah, you know, it's funny because I feel like some travelers might shy away from a place like Chicago in the winter. But if you love the snow and being outdoors, it is a great place to be January, February. We have a ton of ice skating opportunities and they're in really cool spots. So while you're skating, you have this beautiful scenery in the background. 
One is Millennium Park and you have the whole downtown landscape in front of you. And then really close to Millennium Park actually is another park called Maggie Daly Park. That's actually named for a former mayor's wife who was a big benefactor, especially for children's programs in the city. And they have a very cool thing there called the cool thing there, sorry, called the skating ribbon, where people can skate around this big, massive ribbon. And again, you have the beautiful downtown landscape in front of you. So there's a lot of really cool winter activities outdoors, if you like that. There's also indoor activities in the winter too. A lot of sporting things you can do as well. We have Kaiser Tiger, which has a lot of bocce. We have Punch Bowl Social Club, which also has a lot of indoor activities, sporting activities. You can do whether you like indoor or outdoor. There's a lot to do here in the winter. Oh, that's fantastic. So how about spring? Mm -hmm. My favorite. Yeah, is, <laughs> yeah, when everything starts changing, one of the things I really love to do in the spring is go down to the Japanese gardens in Jackson Park. We actually have a big array of Chinese blossom trees. So they bloom just like in DC where that's really popular for mm -hmm. those trees. They, they bloom here around March as well. So it's a really, really pretty thing to go see. And then we have places like the Chicago Botanic Gardens, which are open year round. But of course, the things blooming in the spring, it's a really cool place to be to see all the different foliage. Um, I think what else is good in the spring? I mean, there's just so many parks in Chicago to enjoy. Once the weather starts turning, we have Lincoln Park, which is huge. It's also connected to Lincoln Park Zoo. But there's a lot of different sculptures you can take in when you're walking there. So if you're a fan of public art or just seeing things while you're walking, there's a lot to take in while you're walking through Lincoln Park. Are there walking tours? I know like in San Francisco, we've got yeah. a company that like offers free walking tours that, you know, you pay a tip afterwards. There's also historic tours, there's ghost tours yeah. and yeah. food tours, which of course are my favorite walking tours because you can burn <laughs> calories while you're eating. Um, is there any that you've taken or that you would recommend for, especially for a walking tour of Chicago? Yeah, there's a ton of tours here. There's Bizarre Bucktown is a really popular one, which is hyper-local. It takes place in the Bucktown neighborhood, but it shows you a lot of the hidden, interesting things about that very artsy community. So that's a great one to try. If you're here in the fall, I love Chicago hauntings. They do, Chicago's very haunted being um, an older city. We have a lot of activity here with the paranormal and there's a lot of researchers here. So that's a great tour oh. to take if you're interested in sort of the macabre or the sort of um, supernatural side of things. So that's a really great one. We also have Chicago crime tours, which if oh, you're yeah. into that mobster kind of history, <laughs> I love it. People, I love it. Yeah. A lot of people love the like allure of Al Capone. So there's, there's that one, which is great to take as well. So there's a, there's a lot of variety of tours to take here and food ones as well. Oh, great. Now, how about the summer? Because um, mm -hmm. it seems like the summer is the time I would like to hang out in Chicago. <laughs> long, long nights with the sun out. Yeah. And just, yeah. Tell us about what you like to do in the summer. I'm Teresa Rodriguez, Editor-in-Chief of Wear San Francisco. And you're listening to Wear Travel Podcast, where we'd love to talk about anything related to travel. For more information about this episode, as well as Wear Traveler, be sure to check out wearTraveler.com. And just, yeah, tell us about what you like to do in the summer. I'll be honest, summer can get a little overwhelming in Chicago because there is so much going on and the city really packs a lot into a few short months. One of the best things to take advantage of is the, the routine calendar of festivals in Chicago. So the oh. city puts on a lot of free festivals, a lot centered uh -huh. around music. So we have our world famous Chicago Blues Festival. It's one of the only remaining free festivals of its kind in the country. And of course, Chicago being the home of the blues, it's a great place to see older blues men, legends like Buddy Guy, but also newer people like Gary Clark Jr. was there last year. So that's a great one. We have Taste of Chicago, which happens as well, uh, right after the July 4th holiday. And you can, of course, go get food, but there's also music at that festival as well. And then there's a variety of street festivals that happen all throughout the summer where you can get a taste of different restaurants within the neighborhood, buy goods from different vendors. Um, there's kids activities, there's fashion shows that all take place outdoors. Of course, summer brings in all of the big national festivals as well. We have Lollapalooza, which will be celebrating its 15th year in 2020 for being in Chicago. That's a huge event in early August that just brings in a lot of travelers. And then we have the Pitchfork Music Festival that happens 
in July. But beyond, if you're festivaled out, there's other stuff to do in Chicago as well. Of course, the beaches, like I mentioned, being right on Lake Michigan, we have this great advantage of having a ton of beach areas within the city, whether you're up north and you want to go to Hollywood Beach or you're south and you want to go to near Jackson Park. There's a ton of beaches to take advantage of throughout the the really nice warm summer months. And then Navy Pier is another really great example for something to do during the summer. They have the Centennial Ferris Wheel, which a lot of people love to do in carousel rides. Just being on the water, I think, is one of the best ways to enjoy the summer months in Chicago, and that's a great spot to do it. Well, let's talk, let's go back to my favorite subjects, food. Is there any (laughs) restaurants that are on the water that at summertime they open up and have beautiful patios? Or would you also like maybe recommend a place to pick up a picnic and head to the beach? Both of those are great. There's a North Avenue beach. There's a newer place that opened a couple of years ago called Shore Club. And you are right on the sand. Your feet are in the sand while you're enjoying actually a gourmet meal right on the beach there. So that's a great spot to go to. There's another one further south called the Promontory. It's in Hyde Park and it's right near Promontory Point where the water kind of meets the breakaways. That's a really scenic place to have a meal. But picnics, like you said, are really a great idea in Chicago. There are several restaurants where you can go and pre-order a picnic meal and take it with you. And do you have a place that you would recommend? Buy bottled wine, buy some salads, and you're two blocks from Fisherman's Wharf, right? Um, yeah. So I don't know if you have options like that or if there's, you know, more of a fancy deli that people love to go to. Yeah, I know the Florentine is one restaurant that definitely does summer picnic baskets. And then I'm trying to think if there's others that are right near the water. I can't think of any at the top of my head, but I, I know that that is a thing in Chicago that different restaurants do take advantage of. Okay, well, this is one thing we haven't talked about yet, which I can't believe we haven't talked about yet. Chicago Mm -hmm. pizza. (laughs) Let's Mm -hmm. talk about Chicago pizza. Even in California, we talk about Chicago pizza. Let's talk about Chicago pizza. Yeah, where do you want to start? That's a very loaded topic. (laughs) I know, right? I mean, you've got the deep dish. (laughs) So can you just like elucidate our listeners on what is what is considered a Chicago pizza versus like a, a pizza from any other part of the world? So this is a big topic of controversy for locals, travelers, everyone who comes to Chicago. This topic is brought up all the time. And I don't know if there's actually a definitive answer. You have a lot of people who say that the deep dish is the Chicago style. It's that casserole, thick pizza. But a lot of people don't like it, actually. I personally love it. But then other people will say that the thing, the really thin pizza is also our style. We don't have the big slices like New York does, but we cut them in squares, which I've heard is a Chicago thing. I'm sure oh. they do that elsewhere in the country. Um, and then we have the, a, new, a couple new places opening up. One is called Roots Handmade Pizza that says they have a Detroit style pizza, which I've never heard of, but that's more of the pan style where it's also cut into rectangles. So you can get any kind of variety of pizza here, even New York style pizza. You can get that in Chicago. I think if you like bread, meat or bread, cheese and sauce, you can find a place for that in Chicago. But if you really want the authentic Chicago style pizza, in my opinion, that would be deep dish. And there's a ton of great places to get that in Chicago. Like Lou Malnati's is one of the most popular. Gino's East is another great one. Giordano's as well. They have that really nice deep dish style of pizza that people really kind of crave when they come to Chicago. I love it. So San Francisco is known for wine country and Mm -hmm. for, you know, we say that we're the home of the martini because of Martinez and the Buena Vista Irish coffee, um, even though Mm -hmm. it wasn't invented in Ireland. What drinks are, is Chicago known for? Drinks. Well, we have our own liqueur here. Another big controversial topic. It's called Malort. It, it's not the best tasting <laughs> liqueur ever. <laughs> and, the name's, not. and the name's not very pretty either. <laughs> no, and there's actually a meme that goes around or a, a hashtag about the first time you've tried Malort because the faces that people make are hysterical. It's just <laughs> not a very good tasting liqueur, but it's one of those cult classic things that you have to have when you're in Chicago. I guess I've had visitors here and that's what I take them to do. And it's it's a fun time. I can't, I can't lie. <laughs> okay. So but, what's, what's Malort made yeah. out of? You know, I don't even know. I, it's just, it's a very strange liqueur that, that it was founded in Chicago, but I'm not even sure what's in it other than it just has a very, very strong taste to it. Okay. Well, there's a mission for you, my dear. 
find out what's in there. Yeah, to find out. I should. I know. I should look more into the history of, of Malort. But it, for now, it's just a, a cult classic thing for people to go. If you have somebody new in town, take them to get a shot of Malort and then take a picture or a video of their faces they're drinking it. That's a big thing in Chicago. <laughs> I love it. I'm definitely yeah. going to do that the next time in, I'm in Chicago. <laughs> will, okay, let's go for a shot of Malort, even though we don't know what it's what's in the Malort. What are some of yeah. the... Um, historical significant places around Chicago that our listeners would be interested in knowing about? Historical spots. Navy Pier is a big one. So that's actually part of the plan that the famed architect Daniel Burnham had for the city of Chicago was to create all these piers that jutted into the water. And that was the only one that came to fruition. Huh. There's a long history of that of that site. And of course, the Museum of Science and Industry is another place that actually dates back to the 1893 World's Fair, which was a big deal in Chicago. That museum was purpose-built for the fair. So it's one of the last standing relics of that era. If you've read the book Devil in the White City, that comes up a lot in that book. So that is a great spot to go if you want to see history, a snapshot of history right before you is the Museum of Science and Industry. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And I also know the story about the cow burning down Chicago. Is that true? Is that a, <laughs> is that a legend? Is it, what is it? Is it a tale? You know, I was just on the Chicago Hauntings Ghost Tour recently, and that exact story came up. That's actually, according to the expert that we had guiding our tour, that's actually a myth. It did not start with a cow. It did happen with the O'Leary family, but it was after a night of revelry and drinking and someone kicking over a candle. That is what I've heard started the Chicago fire. See, it's, they always blame it on the bovine. I know. Oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> the poor cow. Those poor cows <laughs> getting blamed. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it was just such an, op, you know, it was so awesome to take some time to speak with you. I know how busy your schedule is. Is there yeah, anything thanks, else, Teresa. anything else you want to share with our listeners about Chicago? Chicago next year is going to be the year of music. So every year lately, Chicago has come up with a different theme for the year and the whole city gets involved and supports the mission. So look, if you're coming to Chicago in 2020, look for a lot of activities around the topic of music. We have so many different music genres that started here from blues to house music to industrial music. So there's going to be a lot going on in the city in 2020 around uh, music. So that's a great thing to look forward to next year. Love it. Music. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, this mm -hmm. is Teresa Rodriguez, your host with the Wear Traveler podcast. And we have been speaking with the delightful Selena Fergasi, who is the Wear editor at the Chicago office. Thank you so much, my dear. Thanks, Teresa. I appreciate it. Thank you listeners for joining me. You've been listening to the Wear Traveler podcast hosted by me, Teresa Rodriguez. This episode was produced and directed by Pete A. Turner, John Leon Guerrero, and Victoria Shepard. To listen to this podcast, find out more information about the crew, as well as Wear Traveler, visit weartraveler.com, your ultimate destination guide.